Dear friends, hello again and thank you very much for uh, coming back to my channel. Hope you're doing very well and uh, in this video, as promised earlier, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about some of the left hand technique aspects. So on this occasion, I will not be discussing any fingering solutions or you know how to play faster runs or whatever. Uh, we may come to this later on. But today I would like to rather uh, focus uh, our attention on how to control or rather I'd say enhance your sound as the left hand's role is absolutely crucial in this along with the setup but we did speak about this before so now I'm quite sure I must have mentioned it earlier that uh, we all our hands tend to somehow replicate the type of sound that we have inside here I'm not sure how it happens on the physiological or scientific level, but this is how it is. So what I mean, you know, you ask some other player with different preferences, so they would give you, uh, you know, a set of completely different ideas. And that's great. It's great that we are so different, otherwise the world would have been really boring. So I will now uh, be elaborating something, you know, about the type of sound, the approach that is kind of, I find kind of close to me. Okay, so let's start. The first thing uh, I'd like to draw your attention to is a couple of uh, typical errors, if you will, because, you know, this word, I don't know how proper it is in jazz, but still. First one is a vibrato, and I think this is really important because we need to make a clear distinction between the classical vibrato and the jazz vibrato. So the classical vibrato, uh, your finger stays glued to one point on the fingerboard, right? And the vibrato itself is pretty intense. It could be a bit faster if you want. I, I'm not a big fan of really fast vibrato, but still, it is quite intense and your finger doesn't go up and down at all. So in jazz, we use a way more relaxed approach, both uh, from the point of view of the speed, and uh, we may also let our finger slightly wander about up and down. Uh, so, you know, it, it, the minimum extent is that when you use this surface, this kind of circular, surface of your finger i'm exaggerating now what do you see what happens we are uh, bending the pitch like this but still your finger stays in one spot or or and we may do this so uh it oscillates uh, our hands like our fingers like oscillates goes up and down um, now, um, you know what, let me first maybe just play you some random example, let it be, I don't know, the in head of, what's it called, Dave Brubeck's tune, In Your Own Sweet Way. You must have noticed an array of little tricks and of course you know when you just play it like this out of context it becomes a mere, merely a demonstration because all these tricks you know they they're appropriate when they are within a musical context but still so what uh, let, let, let's actually come back to it I can't obviously remember exactly how I played it but I will explain to you as we go so you see the first note I'm not staying on one place. I'm arriving to it uh, using a tiny gliss. Now, this note, 
I do a little bit of this pitch bending. So I start, I start it now. Uh, with going slightly in this direction with my finger, then I put it back and then I use it this kind of side rotation. Yep. Now, here is a little gliss. And at this point, it would be very appropriate to uh, tell you now about the second mistake that I have mentioned earlier is actually the glissando. So in jazz, uh, any kind of, well, not any, most of kind of longer glisses that are uh, larger than a semitone or maybe a tone, uh, they sound a little bit cheesy and not jazz. That's one thing. And if you want to use a glissando, uh, the glissandos, they do work great, but they have to be fast. So, of course, there are some situations when it is appropriate, but all this kind of thing, you know, some people are really exaggerating it and they maybe they think that this is this would sound jazz, but it doesn't. So, because we need some sort of what to call it relaxed intensity, if you if you will. Okay, let's come back to the example. Okay, this is I'm doing exactly what I did in the very beginning. Now, uh, I'm using uh, the, I'm adding a grace note, and in some other context it could be two grace notes, not in this tune, not in this very context, but just so you know, also like this, and in this case uh, the movement has to be pretty fast. Okay. any of these oscillations uh, slash pitch bending but uh, towards the end of the sound what I did I quit I cut the note out on this tiny gliss and this is one of the very uh, valid and useful tools and you may want to do it either way in this direction or in this direction but since well, well I mean we we should never uh, we should always consider the context so the next note is a C sharp so it wouldn't make much sense to go like this so we go we go in this direction okay continue gliss Here, it is sufficient just to have this kind of, you know, wide, nice, large, vibrato. It's really slow. It, it's not this classical, intense thing. It just, just compare it. Good work. Here is a combination of uh, adding a grace note and coming back to this note on this little glissando. Glissando, very loose, relaxed vibrato. So there are just, you know, uh, these are just few ways uh, that you can, you know, few methods, tricks, techniques that you can use. But of course, we shouldn't be uh, limiting ourselves to to just these, and there are some other things, like for example, uh, left hand pizzicato, something like this. Could be quite efficient. Or even the uh, ghost notes, especially if you, uh, if you play some sort of, you know, lick. Uh, so that is one you do not press entirely to the fingerboard uh, your your fingers and so you you get uh, to play this kind of I'm sorry here's the harmony that's what still you see you, you hear harmonics but kind of 
can't be uh, imitated out of the context, but you know what I mean. It's really quick, this note, these notes, they are passing really quickly, and therefore you have this kind of a muted sound, which you really need for this kind of licks. Anyhow, uh, the main message of this video is that we should never uh, underestimate the importance of the left hand and how much you can actually do with it just to enhance your sound. I hope this has been useful and uh, maybe later on I'll add something to this when something else comes to my mind and uh, uh, in the future as I had said earlier um, I will probably do another uh, video um, dedicated to some fingering solutions and you know some other aspects of the left hand technique and hope you will be back with me then. Thank you very much, have a good time, see you next time.